All right, so I've created a time frequency analysis package that is a plugin for EEG Lab, and it makes the Morlet Wavelet decomposition function compatible with both EEG Lab data and ERP Lab data sets. This package is very useful when using EEG Lab either programmatically in script or within the GUI environment. I've also added a few other tools in addition to the MWD function that can operate on time frequency data. And these perform basic mathematical operations that can be easily done within the script, but I find these very useful when operating within the GUI, so I'm not having to jump back and forth between environments. Now, with the exception of this plotting tool down here, you can see that all of these tools are duplicated so that you can choose between EEG lab data and ERP lab data. Uh, and then there's also this wavelet design tool that I'll show later. Now, the purpose of this demonstration is to show the use of the TFA package within the EEG Lab GUI and in conjunction with ERP Lab. I'll touch on a couple scripting notes, but as you can see here in the demo script, the programmatic function calls are actually shown next to all of the step-by-step -step GUI commands. So I'd encourage you to explore this demo script along with the function calls for more information on how to call these functions programmatically. So I have an EEG recording here that we're going to use in this demo, and the recording is of a subject performing an imagined motor movement task in which the participant was asked to imagine moving their left or right hand in response to a left or right arrow shown on the screen. But just to imagine moving their hand, not to actually make any movements. Of course, it's been shown that when a person imagines a left or right side movement, that the mu rhythm of the contralateral hemisphere desynchronizes or drops in power. The mu rhythm being the 12 hertz rhythm over sensory motor cortices. So here we're going to attempt to extract that activity in response to the imagined motor movement. Now this EEG lab data set has already had some basic pre-processing steps applied to it. And that's only included common average re-referencing a frequency filter from 0.1 to 50 hertz and data epicking relative to the left and right arrow events. And you can see this data here in nine second long epics with the event occurring uh, three seconds in. Bin one events are the trigger for the left hand imagined motor movement and bin two events are for the right hand imagined motor movement. There's 80 total epics, 40 of those epics being left hand imagined motor movements and the other 40 being right hand imagined motor movements. Okay, so now let's see if we can actually extract this mu ERD. First, we're gonna start with a clean EEG lab session and then we're gonna go in and import the data set name mu task epic set. And this is the same data set that we were just looking at. So then we're going to go into tools, time frequency analysis, and to the Morlet Wavelet decomposition tool for EEG lab data. The first group of options to find the convolution, and the second to find how we want to handle the output. Here we can select which data channels we actually want to convolve. And I'm just going to say that I want to involve all of them. And then we define the center frequencies of the Morlet wavelets. And so I'm going to select 12 hertz for the mu rhythm. And then finally, the parameters of that wavelet. And I'm going to say I want a frequency domain full width at half maximum of 6 hertz. And defining wavelets here is the same as we did back in the Morlet wavelet demo. And now how do we want our convolution results to be output? Selecting this first option, We'll store all the time series bandpass, power, and phase data in the original EEG structure, etc. field. I can imagine that this option might be useful in some cases of batch processing, and maybe based on your own programming style, you may prefer this, but it'll probably be rare that you'll use this, particularly when working in the GUI environment. These next few options will each create a new data set, with this last option being a little bit different, but I'll show that later on in this video. Each of these new data sets will be equivalent to the original data set in terms of the event and channel structure. Uh, unless you select a subset of channels, of course. But the time domain data will be replaced with the time domain bandpass, power, phase, or complex data with the new data unit shown here. For the phase, I make a point of specifying that zero radians is a cycle's positive peak, just to be clear that I'm talking about phase in terms of a cosine rather than a sine function. You can probably usually assume that phase values are in terms of a cosine, since I think that's more conventional, but a few days of my master's thesis was eaten up trying to figure out why I couldn't replicate the results of a couple particular papers that didn't mention that they were reporting phase in terms of a sine function. So now I'm just a bit anal retentive about that. This complex data contains the data in all three of these data sets combined, with its real value being the bandpass data, the square of its absolute value being the power data, and its argument being the phase. But I'm going to cover working with complex data and how it can be useful for computing phase locking, among other things, in the next video. Quickly though, I'm going to warn you to be very careful when using this function, because each of these options will create a whole new data set for every wavelet frequency defined. So if you define 20 wavelets, and you have these three options selected, you'll end up with 60 additional data sets. Instead, using the complex data set output can cut this by a third and still retain all of the data, and so that can help. And this last output option will be especially useful when working with a lot of wavelets, as I'll show later.
The reason that is set up this way is because EEG lab data matrices are only three-dimensional, containing channels, times, and epics. If you're going to be working with a lot of wavelets, you really should drop out of the EEG lab GUI environment altogether and just use the standalone MWD function included with this package, which will add a fourth dimension to the data matrix for frequency. Anyway, to compute the mu desynchronization, we really only need the power data, but I'm also going to include the phase and bandpass data just so that I can show you that as well. Okay, and so now what you'll see is, holy smokes. Okay, so this is why I had said to be careful using this function because I had forgotten that I had told it to create 20 different wavelets as an example of what not to do with those settings. Now what I have is a new bandpass power and phase data set for every whole frequency between five and 25 Hertz, giving me an extra 63 data sets. So I'm gonna go back and reset and run this like I'm supposed to. All right, so now we're back where we started from, extracting the 12 Hertz bandpass power and phase from all channels. And running this now, we see that we have three additional data sets, all 12 hertz bandpass power and phase. Phase, we can view in the channel data scroll. And this is quite dizzying to look at like this, but it can be useful to operate on uh, for certain purposes. Same thing with the bandpass data. This is basically just as if we had applied any other bandpass filter on the data. But then finally, we also have the 12 hertz power, which is really the only thing that we are interested in for these purposes. Now remember once you convert to power or phase data, you need to be very careful using all EEG lab and ERP lab functions because EEG lab and ERP lab does not realize that you're not still operating in microvolts, but in microvolts squared or radians. And the same goes for the complex values that I'll show you later. But so now that we have the 12 Hertz power data extracted, we can go on to compute the mu ERD. And we're gonna do that by first averaging all of the epics in the left and right imagined motor movements using ERP lab. So we go to compute average ERPs, hit run, and we're just going to name this new ERP set 12 Hertz power. And so now you can see we have this additional 12 Hertz power average ERP set with two bends, one bend being the left hand and the other bend being the right hand imagined motor movement. But we're still in units of microvolts squared and so we should actually go back and baseline normalize this to decibels before we try to plot it. The ERP lab baseline normalization techniques are not appropriate for data of these units and so we have a baseline normalization tool in the time frequency analysis package. But this time we need to go down to baseline normalization for ERP lab data. So clicking that, you see we have a few different options. The first is we need to select the baseline window. And I'm gonna select the baseline window to be negative 1500 milliseconds to negative 500 milliseconds. And then we can choose a normalization technique. There's a few normalization technique presets. There's decibel, we can convert to percent change, and we could do a Z transform. And all of these are showing the actual formula it's following. And the reason it does that is because we actually have the option to choose our own custom normalization technique by simply typing in basic operations here using standard MATLAB notation. So what you'll see is you're operating with two variables. Activity is simply all of the ERP lab bin data or EG lab data if you are operating on an EEG lab data set. And baseline is the region of the epic data defined by your baseline window. All right, I'm interjecting from the future for a moment because there was a couple things that I should have pointed out here. When typing in commands here, make sure that you're getting your dimensions right. Remembering that this has the same dimensional format as the data field in the EEG and ERP structures. And that time is always in the second dimension. And baseline normalizations are usually gonna be calculated over time. However, there may be some cases that you want to normalize averaged epic data, in which case you would just use a third dimension, of course. Also, the usefulness of this tool extends beyond just baseline normalization. It can be used to perform really any math mathematical operation on the data, whether an EEG lab or ERP lab, and it doesn't have to involve a baseline window. As an example, if this set contained phase data, I might decide that for some reason I prefer to work in degrees instead of radians. I could convert to degrees here just like I would in the command line. Since we actually have the power data set loaded up here, I could instead convert this to amplitude data by simply taking the square root of the activity. Now this may seem like an unnecessary use of this tool since I could easily do this from the command line, but the problem is that EEG lab and ERP lab are both blind to any command line operation like this. However, since I performed that conversion using the normalization tool, it is reflected here in the ERP lab history store. And this can be very useful when using the GUI to build batch processing scripts. With that being said though, we'll get back to the demo. I'm gonna to convert to decibels though and press okay. And now what you see is we have a new ERP set named 12 Hertz power decibel. And with that, we've actually already calculated the mu rhythm ERD and all that's left to do now is to plot it. And of course, ERP lab has a lot of great plotting functions for averaged bin data. 
I'm going to use plot ERP scout map so that we can get a visualization of the mu rhythm ERD over the head and over time. And so in fact, I'm going to plot from negative 500 milliseconds in 500 millisecond increments to four seconds in. Now we need to remember to select none for baseline correction since we've already baseline corrected to decibels. And I'm gonna switch this to map just to make the plotting a little bit better. And I'm gonna to want to plot everything from negative six to six decibels. And hitting plot. Now we have a really good visualization for how the mu rhythm desynchronizes over time after an imagined motor movement. So the top row, of course, being the imagined left-hand motor movement and zero being the start of the task, we can see about 500 to 1,000 milliseconds in, we get this huge drop in mu rhythm over the right side sensory motor cortex. It starts to taper off after about 3,000 milliseconds when the trial ended. And the same down at bottom, where they imagine moving their right hand, we get this huge mu rhythm drop in power over the left sensory motor cortex. Of course, all of the functions that we called during this session are stored as their equivalent command line function calls in the EEG and ERP structure history fields. So of course there's where we called the MWD function on all channels, 12 hertz, and so on. And there's where we called the baseline normalization function. But also included in the mu rhythm GUI demo is a script performing the equivalent analysis that we did in the GUI. And so if I run this script here, then there we have our mu rhythm ERD again. But of course in script you have a lot more control over plot appearance, so it looks much better this time. And you can see that instead of Jet, I'm using the color map Viridis, which is a perceptually uniform color map that's not included with MATLAB by default, but that I've included with this time frequency analysis package. So with that, I've shown how to use the time frequency analysis package in conjunction with both EEG lab and ERP lab to compute a mu rhythm ERD across all channels and over time. But in many cases, we're gonna be interested in seeing changes across a wider range of frequencies. We can do this very easily within the GUI, but only for a single channel at a time. Similar to what I said earlier, if you want to analyze many frequencies across multiple channels, you can do that with this package, but you really should drop out of the GUI environment and instead use the standalone MWD function that's included with this package. And I covered the use of that function to some extent, both in the Morelet Wavelet demo and in the simulated decomposition demo. But quickly, I'm gonna show you how to do this within the GUI. So let's go back to the original data set and we'll go down to the Morelet Wavelet decomposition tool for EEG lab data. And this time we're gonna pick 45 wavelets at every whole frequency up to 45 Hertz. And we'll define all of them to have a width at half maximum of four Hertz. I'll then choose the power option since we're still interested in seeing that ERD. If I just run this though, I'll get 45 new data sets, one for each frequency defined. Instead, I should also choose this last option, which will compress everything into one data set by adding the results of the convolution at each frequency as a new data channel. But to do this, we have to choose just one channel to be convolved. And so I'll choose channel C4, which is over the right sensory motor cortex, and then I can choose this last option. And actually I'm gonna do every half frequency as well, since I think it will be more clear later what is happening in the channel space. So now by running this, electrode C4 will be convolved at every frequency, and the power output at each frequency will be added as a new data channel. And so now you can see here that we have this new C4 freaks power data set. And if I open the data scroll, you'll see that rather than electrodes, we have wave at center frequencies and the trace is the power at each of those frequencies. And so now again, we'll compute the averaged ERD using ERP lab. And I'll name the ERP set C4 ERD. And then I'll baseline normalize it like we did before by converting it to decibels from negative 1500 to negative 500 milliseconds. And now we have this new C4 ERD DB ERP set. Now you could use some of ERP Labs plotting functions to view this data as line traces, but those are not really how we'd usually prefer to view data like this over many frequencies. So I've added this plotting function to the time frequency analysis package that is specifically meant to plot frequency by time data averaged in ERP Lab. And it will plot each ERP set bin data separately. This function is really only meant for a quick visualization of your data without needing to exit the GUI, and so will not automatically format itself in the most optimal way. Uh, but you could dress up this figure in the command line. So easily here we can see the power changes over time for each frequency at channel C4 when imagining a left or right hand motor movement. And of course C4 only registers left hand motor movements, where you can see this large ERD at 12 Hertz again. Uh, these power drops up here are just the 12 Hz harmonics. The demo script, of course, contains 
the equivalent script commands that will produce identical results. And so, of course, you have more control over how you plot the data and can make it look a lot nicer. So that wraps it up for this demonstration. In the next demo, I'll demonstrate operating in the frequency channel space again. And we'll mainly be focusing on, on how to work with complex data within the GUI to compute intertrial phase locking.